Um, the restrooms are on the second floor. And we're asking everybody to turn their cell phones off. Um, and one other thing, the evaluations are out on the table there. There's a box to put them in. So if you leave early or whatever, please fill them out. Um, it's important as sponsors to, be, to get the evaluations in order to sponsor this again. So we ask that you do that. Um, so welcome to the second panel, which is funding your business. Steps in applying for a loan, other sources of capital, mistakes to avoid. We have a very great panel here. I'm very excited about it today. And um, the, what we're, we're going to do, just like we did the first panel, I have questions. And some of them, because all of you represent a different organization, and then we have actu an actual artist here, I mean, woman who, who actually got a loan for her art business, and she's going to tell you about that. Um, so on my, I'm gonna, I have some questions that I'm going to ask each of you to ask, to answer, because we have various, there are various banks up here, and funding sources, and they all work a little differently, which is why they're here. So I'm going to ask them my first question. And then, yeah, oh yeah, and then the three minute rule, if you could, uh, before you answer the question, if you could say who you are in a couple minutes about your organization, because the rest of the information, as you know, is on the handouts, the bio, everybody's website, you can contact them later. So, um, oh yeah, and they're all, maybe some of them have nuggets of information to share. <laughs> okay, now let me get to my little, my question. Okay. So I'm going to ask, we're going to just go down the line and ask each of you uh, to address this question based on your own financial institution. I think we'll have another question for you. So the first question is, what are the three most considerations I need as a borrower, borrower before applying for a loan from your institution? What are the three most important considerations I need as a borrower before applying for a loan? And the first is Mike Ariel. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> hey everybody, my name is Mike Ariel. I'm the Senior Area Manager for the U.S. Small Business Administration based in Nashville. I serve the 22 counties of West Virginia. Oh, Carolina. shit. Apparently they can't hear you. Uh, is that? No, that's fine. Right. Yeah, speak right into it. Okay, how's that? Great. <coughs> <Okay. laughs> yeah, I'm Mike Ariel with the Small Business Administration. We're a U.S. government agency. We help out with SBA loans. I do this in Nashville. Uh, as far as three points or tips, the first thing you uh, to bear in mind is that there are no grants uh, from the federal government. There, there, are, there is a very is narrow, the yeah, except for that. Um, and there, there's a there is a very narrow sliver of research and development type of grants. But other than that, for the run of the mill type of retail industry or that sort of thing, there are no grants from from the SBA. Uh, second tip is keep good credit. If you have any sort of blips on your personal credit history, especially if you're in the loan-seeking mode, a good practice is to go ahead and pull up your own credit credit history as well as your credit report. And you can do that through annualcreditreport.com. Annualcreditreport.com. Uh, click on the Equifax link because the Equifax uh, Credit Bureau serves the Southeast. And it'll be telling you to pay for your credit score, which is about six bucks, that sort of thing. But it's important to have a good idea as to what your credit score is before you march into the bank or wherever, because that's probably going to be the first thing that you're likely to for. And thirdly, um, bear in mind uh, your ability to repay that loan. Um, lenders will always tell you, you know, we are cash flow lenders. What does that mean? That means we look first and foremost as to the cash flow of your enterprise or your art, the sale of your art or your press to repay the loan. Um, and there is just numerous resources here in, in town that can help you sort of fine tune your cash flow projections and that, and that sort of thing. Um, as artists, we don't expect you to be CPAs or accountants or pros at drafting these cash flow projections or any other aspect of the business plan. That's why we have folks like Anise and Mountain BizWorks and Asheville Score to help you along the way for that. So, um, that's it for me. Could you tell them a little bit about SBA, or did you? And I yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Uh, we're, we're a U.S. government agency. We do SBA loans in partnership with banks. We've got federal 
contracting opportunities. We provide funding for folks like SBTDC, Asheville Score, and that sort of thing, so that they can do the majority of the counseling that we have available. Thank you. I'm Jane Hatley. I'm with Self Help Credit Union, which is a community development financial institution. And basically what that means is it's um, a nonprofit lender with a mission of serving the underserved. Um, and historically, for us in the region, that has often meant artists um, because they were somewhat difficult to fund for traditional banks. Um, what I would say is my three uh, considerations. Uh, one is to remember that not every lending institution is the same as others and to to, if you have been turned down by one, to not see that as total rejection. Just keep in mind that each lending institution has individual lending criteria. So, you know, we are focused right now a lot on re-business, um, whereas another uh, CDFI or another um, bank might be focused on downtown development or might be focused on manufacturing. Um, and so you just want to see what their lending criteria are and you can call the loan officer and say, would you consider funding an artist for a loan of this size? It's, you know, that's, that's your first step into the lender. Um, the second thing I would let you know, just as a background, is that the process of applying for a loan, for a commercial loan, for a small business loan, is very different from any other loan you've ever applied for, like a, a car loan or a personal loan. It's uh, a lot of paperwork. Uh, you're going to need to have things like your tax returns in order, your finances for your business in order, your own resume in order to show your capacity as um, a person who can run that business. So just be prepared for the fact that it's a long, difficult process. And the more that you work with your uh, loan officer, the, the easier it will go. Um, and I think I'm going to pass it on because I can't think of a third. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jane. My name is Andrew Triple A, and I'm with the Support Center. Uh, like Jane, the Support Center, the Support Center is a CDFI or Community Development Financial Institution. We're based in Raleigh, North Carolina. I serve as our small business lending manager and one of our underwriters. Uh, the Support Center, uh, much like self-help, we seek to serve those in underserved communities, uh, specifically uh, in, in rural communities, uh, businesses that are owned by women, women businesses that are owned by minorities. Uh, and going into the my three points or uh, things that I would have you to look at prior to applying, <clears throat> one is to make sure that you have a strong package. Uh, Jane spoke uh, about a lot of the information that we as underwriters look for in your package, such as tax returns, resumes, and just making sure that you have all those items together. Making sure that you uh, have good record keeping because at the end of the day, uh, one of the, the biggest points that we're going to look at is your cash flow or your ability to repay the loan. Uh, Mike mentioned earlier, you know, there really aren't a lot of grants out here. Our loan fund is not a grant. So at the end of the day, we will have to be able to understand how you will service the debt that you are requesting from us. Um, another thing, uh, I think Jay kind of touched on it, you know, we will look for industry experience. Uh, that, that those things are, are very important and, and as, as has already been mentioned before, credit will be an important piece as well. Uh, I'll cut off right there and I'll pass them off. Thank you. Hi, I'm Patrick Duran and I'm a small business lender for Mountain Fish Works, which is, um, has its office just outside of downtown Asheville. And um, we're also a CDFI and we do small business, uh, business planning, training, and uh, lending, which is what I do. Um, so I, I basically underwrite all of those that we do. Um, and of course, everybody already had a chance to give all the best answers. <laughs> 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 uh, but I'll just, I'm going to mention a few things. I mean, you know, some of these things that have already been said are, you know, the most important for us too. A couple things is um, we kind of want to look at, you know, if you're looking at uh, something, you, you kind of can call it a project, and um, we want to see that it's not entirely our resources that are going into the project. So somehow or another, we're interested in seeing some sort of investment on your end, whether it's some money that you have to put into it or some equipment that you have, uh, you know, already bought or just um, something that you have kind of invested on your end beyond, you know, the time of, uh, 
a, a sweat equity of, of, um, a, a kind of planning the business or putting some things together. Just what's some tangible investment that you put into it on your end? It's kind of like a down payment on a house loan in a way. I mean, just some kind of equity uh, skin in the game you have. Um, we do need there to be collateral on the loan as well. We can be very flexible on that. And, and working with us, and I think probably with you as well, um, not positive, but you know, we're kind of an alternative lender. And so we're trying to be flexible to figure out how we can make the loan work. And so what we're what that really means is if if you're you probably if you're working with us, there's something that excludes you from getting a loan from a bank. And so there's like maybe a weakness in one area, maybe a strength in another area can make up for that. Um, so you know it's just kind of a, a balancing act of a lot of different variables to try to figure out how we can make it work and Really, what we're trying to do is figure out how you can um, put various sources of income together to pay us back. So we're looking at it very holistically, um, not just the business, but whatever else is in your household, whoever else is signing on the loan, what their sources of income are, and kind of patching that all together to get to a comfort level that the loan's going to be paid back. Um, and.
spouse or a partner that can handle the sort of the day to day financial side. Are you good at that too? But that would be something we would look at. Um, and then if you're, if you're expanding the business into a new area or you're relatively new, you're probably going to have a business plan too, which I guess the TDC is great. Right. I guess uh, all, all good advice to fire our list, but I'll have a We'll start with you next time. <laughs> so the, um, the reason I asked Eileen here today is because she is an artist who did receive a small business loan. And I, I know that Eileen had worked with Mountain BizWorks in the past. She, Eileen's been an artist for a while, and I'll let her tell her story. And then she also came to work with SBTDC. She's worked with us for a while. And um, I also want to say that for all of us service providers in the community, we will work with you not just one time. I mean, we have clients that we've been working with for 10, 11, 15 years. It's not a one-time deal. You come, we, we might work with you for several months very intensely, and then maybe we don't hear from you until you have a crisis, like a couple years later, or not. So we have an ongoing relationship with all of our clients, and I think all the service providers here today will agree with that. So I mean, it's very resourceful. I've been working with several folks like me and other this works um, to promote her business, and she, I'm going to let her tell her story because when she came to me, she was looking for a loan uh, for a new process. And um, it was an R&D that she was working on. And I do believe your own bank said no, correct? And then, but I'll let you tell, could you address the process and how you actually got the loan and how much time it took and what a hassle it was? <laughs> story really starts with, um, I, I've been in business for 17 years and I am uh, both an artist and I have a, my, well, it's hard, it's so hard really to say, to segment it out. I teach and I sell uh, supplies to other artists, so I have really uh, quite a broad-based background. I've been in business for 17 years, I've known the SBTDC for 17 years, I've been involved with um, one or another person there for all that, all those many years. And um, I started out selling spinning fibers and yarns to hand spinners and hand weavers. And my specialty is cotton. So this market is really tiny. And I've, uh, I've lived on the borderline of poverty for many years. And every once in a while I have this brilliant idea and run in and visit somebody in the SBTDC and say, okay, you know, how are we going to make this? make me some money. And I did all the Excel spreadsheets on the cash flow, and it's like, you know, the cash is going negative, negative, negative. It's like, well, you know, it seemed like a good idea at the time, but it, it wasn't. So finally, I hit the bingo, and I took a class at Mountain Biz Works, uh, took the foundations class, which I should have taken 17 years ago. <laughs> But uh, I think if I had 17 years ago, I probably would not have started my business. So at any rate, <laughs> at any rate um, I took the foundations class and I did a three-year cash flow. And it looked really good. And so then I needed money to, um, to actually launch this product line. So um, I went, I called um, Jane at um, self-help and said, I need a loan. And she said to me, well, we talk, we talk, and she said, well, your credit rating is really good. Um, you don't need us. Why don't you call the niece? And so I'm back at the SBTDC and I call the niece. And um, and niece and I worked on my, actually, I did the work. She prodded me and nudged me and guided me and um, refined my um, my cash flow, my, my marketing and cash flow, um, so that we could present it to a lender. And it did take almost a year um, before I actually got money in the bank. So it was a long process. Um, and luckily I was not desperate because I already had my business, I had revenue, I was not in a gigantic hurry to launch the product line. So um, the product line, um, I got the money in the bank in November, 
and uh, I spent my first money on an attorney to get my LLC. I was a sole proprietorship. And then, <clears throat> then I ordered my prototypes. And so um, I'm well on the way. I'm going to do a wholesale market in May. And uh, we're working on a booth design for that market. And uh, things are looking really good. Could you so, talk about your relationship with um, Anna? Oh, really? Anna. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, how, and how we ended up, how you ended up working with NCIF for your loan? Well, actually, how I, how I ended up working with Anna was um, a niece called me and said, I've got it. I've got just the loan package <laughs> <laughs> And um, I sent my information in, and uh, Anna really wanted the three year cash flow. And um, I had it. It was really, it was really great. And I think the other thing is that um, we sat down. Anna came in to the SBTC offices, and we sat down, and I explained my project to her, and she got it. And it was really nice. So uh, that was uh, that was really exciting. The other thing is that um, this particular uh, loan package did not require me to put my house on this collateral. And that was really important to me. So um, the, the loan package is just really fantastic. Do you want to add something about the process, Anna? Yeah. Um, one, one great thing about me is she has an engineering background. <laughs> <laughs> so she's very good at cash flow projections. And uh, I can tell she thought through um, you know, a lot of her. Because she's kind of rolling out a new product in a sense. So I have quite a few questions. But I didn't know all the technical side of um, dying cotton organically. <laughs> so I think gave me a crash course, which is one part of it. But I like my job is always doing something. Because I'm, I'm sort of generalist, but we have to kind of worry about doing these kind of things. Um, but you know, she was really good at cash flow projections, and she had an existing business, which she'd done well at. So it was just a lot easier analysis for me to do. And Denise is great because she is really good at introducing you know, the right people to each other and being you know, in contact. Because we're, we're pretty small, we don't have a lot of marketing budgets, so and we have to go through some referral sources and be working out. I think another important point that Anna brings up is you notice that she needed to be educated about the process. Mm -hmm. um, you need to use your loan officer as your advocate. I mean, they're your chance to get the loan. So the more information you bring to them, the more forthcoming you are with information, including the bad information. You know, you want to put things out on the table right up front and tell them, I have these issues in the past. Um, you know, I had, a, I had a bankruptcy nine years ago or something. Um, just get it all out on the table so that the loan officer knows what they're dealing with right from the get-go and so that they can work helping you to get that loan. Mm -hmm. okay. um, um, one of the other questions that I have, I think you, can you all hear me? Okay. Um, no. <laughs> um, a lot of small businesses when I see them, and I know all the other service providers, they get the same question about using credit cards to finance your business. Because some of you have them, some have a rewards program to it, some have a very low interest for the first year. And I'm wondering, um, I'm going to ask Mike the question about uh, credit cards. Is that a good way to finance your business? And if anyone wants to add to that, oh, I'm sorry, Anna. <laughs>
a lot of the credit card companies constantly changing the rates on the new side. I'm always surprised that if you do that, it seems like a contract to me that I don't know how they get away with it. I guess you know, I've seen them go up to 20% pretty quickly if nothing else is paying this. Um, but I'll let folks answer, I guess. I think the other thing about that that I would um, warn folks about is that when you do then come, when you get to the stage of growth that comes after that and you need an additional loan, um, if you have really filled up your credit cards, it's going to hurt in terms of your debt to income ratio. And so it can hurt your chances of getting the next stage growth loan. So if, you're, if your overall business plan is to build a fairly big business, and at some point down the line you're going to need big capital, um, I would recommend strongly that you start by applying for that capital early on instead of trying to uh, make it happen on your credit cards. The only point I'll make uh, to add to that is, um, you know, one of the things that Anna mentioned is when you use credit cards, you know, it is a quick, fast, easy process. Um, and you don't have to go through all of the, the questions that uh, a lender is going to ask you. However, sometimes going through those questions help you to think through things and help you to improve your business. Um, you know, the story that we talked about before uh, with the, uh, the other uh, lady that's here with us on the panel, and she talked about going and getting, uh, getting a loan ultimately through, uh, I think she started out with Jane and ultimately ended up with uh, Anderson getting a loan. One of the important parts in that story was her relationship with the SBTDC. And I just think that, you know, Quick and easy isn't always necessarily the best for you. Could uh, you all address the issue of collateral? Eileen had said that she didn't have to use collateral, at least her house is collateral. And that's always a big issue, especially, especially if you're a struggling artist. You might not have any collateral. So maybe you, whoever wants to address the issue of collateral, and Mike's going to talk about several new loans that are out there where you don't need collateral. Um, well, one, I, I guess um, for probably most of us, we're, we're looking at um, securing the loan with collateral with kind of less than what a bank would, would probably look at doing. And so we're, I mean, I guess you could in most cases say we're under collateral. We don't have enough collateral to actually, you know, obviously be able to pay back the loan in a very worst case scenario. And so, you know, the question is, you know, are you committing what you do have, the resources that you do have, are you able to commit those, you know, to, to get to a certain level of security on the loan? And I'm, I'm guessing that there was maybe some other collateral that could be there that felt like that was, you know, in proportion to the size of the loan you got, that that was sufficient. You know, so when we start looking at the house, it's when, when there's nothing, you know, the other things that are there, you know, don't feel like they're, they're getting you to that point. So, um, but I, you know, and the other thing is, you know, putting up your house is a, usually if you're putting up your house, that means, you know, we're taking a second position on, you know, after your home loan, most likely. And so, you know, that's, a, that's kind of a disadvantageous position to be in for a lender. Um, but it, there's a certain amount of psychological commitment that, that that's shown. You know, um, it's it, you know you really, as a lender, you get a sense that, that the borrower is um, willing to meet you. Like I'm take, as a lender, I'm taking a risk lending you money, and you're taking a risk getting into this. But you're also meeting me halfway, saying yes, this is a, you know I'm I'm committing something on my end too, um, and it's very you know. It, depending on the size of the loan, sometimes it's not necessary, but um, sometimes it's, you know, it's a psychological uh, addition uh, to, to the whole package that you know, you're adding that level of commitment to it. But in general, also realize that uh, the lender is going to discount anything that you are putting up to cloud. They're just going to assume that they're going to get less money for it than what you might be able to do. For instance, if you have a really nice piece of equipment as an artist, you might know the best way to sell that, and you know, like in a in a worst case scenario, you might know the best channel. You know, this is where to go sell it, and this is how much I know I can get for it. But 
as a lender, we're not the experts on that, so we're probably going to say we're going to get less than what you think you can get. Um, I so. want Mike to address one other thing, and then we're going to have to open up for questions. Um, but before Mike does, I want to say one quick thing, and that is, I hope, I mean, if you look at the panelists, we don't have any of the big banks here. For example, Bank of America, bb and and it's not because they don't lend. Of course, you know, they're lending, and if you were, for example, to want to build a studio, and you were to hire people, like you were to build a gallery or something, yes, you could use these lenders, but you might also use more of a conventional bank. But the reason I we assembled this panel is because for small artists, I didn't feel that they would be the right folks to address your issues because in my experience, and that's my experience only, I haven't seen them lending to, to your businesses, which is why I didn't invite them. So maybe it's a bad thing, Mike might want to address that, but I'm going to let Mike talk about two small loans and then we're going to open it up for questions. And this, our first question will be right here. Thanks, Mike. Yeah, we, um, uh, SBA loans are basically loans provided by banks or other types of lenders. And then these lenders apply to SBA for a government guarantee. And what that means is we basically stand off to the side as your co signer ready to make payment in case you as the borrower default. And the fact that it's the government guaranteeing these loans is a very strong inducement for lenders who want to make loans that they otherwise wouldn't be able to do. If you can go ahead and get your loan through the bank conventionally without any SBA involvement, then you should do that because we're kind of, think of us as sort of like being trading wheels and after you've made it monthly payments on your loan for a couple of years. Hopefully the next time you go into your bank, you should be able to get your loan without any problem. But So we do help out help with, help with startups, smaller types of enterprises, with collateral or whatever. Uh, now, recently we rolled out a program called Small Loan Advantage. You don't need to you know, keep track of all these various uh, terms of that sort of thing. But the point of that program is we, through, our, through a couple of our lenders, uh, these are out-of-state alternative lenders, both of them have made numerous trips to Western North Carolina. They can offer loans up to twenty-five thousand, with paybacks of seven to ten years, which is very important. That means that you're going to have much more low, much lower loan payments than uh, our commercial lenders would offer, and no collateral, no collateral for loans up to twenty-five thousand. And these are loans guaranteed by the SBA. Startups are are totally welcome. Um, I do have some brochures there on the resource table, as well as a stack of my cards, so um, I would welcome anybody to give me a call and maybe we can sit down in a more confidential um, kind of uh, venue and talk specifically about things like your credit and what would be the most appropriate loan avenue to, to take a look at. So I'm totally open to that. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to open up for questions. We have the first question right here. Can you... Is there a, an accepted or a, a financial industry standard for uh, you know, on a percentage basis uh, or a ratio for uh, the risk of loss versus the size of the loan? If, I, if, I'm, if I'm willing to put my own self, my own personal assets at risk to uh, to start a company to oh, secure a loan, is there? It's like a monthly income to debt ratio sort of thing. Okay. Um, basically, the standard is that you're going to put 20% cash of what you want to borrow, um, and, and it's, it's like Patrick was talking about. It's basically your skin in the game, and that's. You know, sometimes you can, um, would you agree with that, Anna, for you all, is it about 20%? Right, yeah. Um, and sometimes there are programs, like for, um, you know, a, a big purchase of a building, and if you go through the 504 program, you might qualify for a smaller amount down. But those are specialty programs, but the, the standard is usually 20% equity. Is it always cash, or is there a hard asset consideration? That's that's cash in the game, and that's in very often it means cash in a bank account that you're going to spend on the business. So it's showing that you're putting your own money up to to make this happen. For us, we're, we're just slightly a little bit different at the support center. Uh, we only require a ten percent uh, owner's investment, and then in terms of the cash, uh, back to your point. 
it doesn't have to be cash. Let's say you've bought a piece of equipment uh, that is for your business within the last six months or so. We will count the purchase of that piece of equipment towards your owner's investment. But you just need to have, you know, the record people to be able to show us that, you know, this is what I put in. Um, and then I also want to mention quickly that we've just rolled out a veterans loan program at the support center uh, for uh, uh, veterans and their spouses that can be service disabled or uh, active military. And with that particular program, we do not require uh, skin in the game or an uh, owner's investment. Uh, our CEO is a veteran, and his thought behind that program was that uh, your service to this country, that is your skin in the game. Okay. And so we waive that requirement. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay, you had a question. You want to grab that mic over there? Um, I have no idea how to figure out a three-year um, cash flow chart. And is there a form that is easily accessible online? And is there someone on this panel who I assume that might be Next that could help people with that? Uh, yeah, uh, the, the short answer is go to www. <laughs> Dot score, S -E -R -E, dot org. They've got a business toolkit with all kinds of cash projection templates, that sort of thing. But I'll save the second part of your question for the next panel. Yeah, we're going to. There are plenty of resources to help you with that, and we'll address it in more detail in the next panel. So, some other questions? Thank you. 
that has crowded probably um, another a lot of folks from my star who are drugs and go through family and friends. That's you know, <laughs> friends or family who want to invest in you with no return. <laughs> Um, just so people know, we actually have an entrepreneurship program for anyone, regardless of what your business interest is. And we even have a scholarship that pays for the cost of the, the program of study through Dr. Joseph Fox, who is the chairman of the business department. And the first time that we had the scholarship, no one applied for it. Wow. So, just so that you know, that resource is also available. And then we have a small business that students can apply for that will help with the funding of their businesses. So, information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, Phyllis Dwayne is going to be on the panel later, so we have a resource. Oh, oh well. She's going to be there. I haven't seen her yet. I don't know if anybody is very familiar with Kickstarter. I was getting ready to call that whole route recently and I'm talking to artists in Greenville who had gone that route, but when I was saying what I basically wanted was um, startup clients for this business, she said that would not really happen on Kickstarter. They, they require a project with, with a finite project of a time limit and a product that comes from it, like she was going to be going um, down the Route 66, taking pictures, the paintings of the hotels and signage so that would then she's going to exhibit. But she said, I know them pretty well, and I do not think that would be your best route. Um, so she said there were, were other business um, crowdsources, and not one thing I was going to ask today. I've just you know, gotten a few good ones. But I will say that she felt like it did not qualify as just for um, startup funds. That's helpful. Yeah, that's good to know. I think Indiegogo is a little, um, a little less. Wait, recent. Patrick, let's. Sorry. <laughs> Just wanted to say real quick that I think Indiegogo is, is, is a, is, has less restrictions on that. She's saying there were some that did do startups, but she, I was just going to talk about that. Yeah. Indiegogo.com. I A I E. Yes. Some more other questions? Let me just address the issue of self fighting. That's an issue that affects any business. It doesn't matter whether you're an artist, you're starting a restaurant, you're turning a hobby into a business. It, as Brenda mentioned this morning, starting your business is hard. You know that. I mean, not, and I feel your pain. Not only are you an artist, but you have to deal with the business side of things. Um, I remember I had a client who made beautiful jewelry many years ago, and she didn't like dealing with people. So she sold only wholesale, and then when the economy tanked, a lot of her gal a lot of the galleries and retail shops were not ordering as much, and she was there were a lot of gaps in her income. She was she needed money, and she was struggling. And I said to her, "Why don't you do some festivals? You know, the, the um, uh, some of the craft festivals, the high end ones in the southeast." And she said, "Oh no, I'm not doing. I can't do that." Well. You know, my comment to her was, well, if you're not willing to do that kind of marketing and do what it takes, you know, maybe it's not a great idea to have your business because it's one thing when the economy is doing well and all is, is great, but you have to have plan B. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes to keep the business going. Um, it's not for the faint of heart. That's, and Brenda alluded to that. We have a question here. Uh, actually, I also wanted to answer the lady because uh, I'm part of a gallery now, right now, that's sort of a cooperative. And uh, it's uh, called Arrowhead and Old Fort. We're just going to be opening up. It's not opening this weekend. And we're opening up on the 27th if anybody wants to come out to Old Fort. Um, so that weekend is um, So uh, that's one possibility. Yeah. We're together with some other people. And that actually leads into my question for all of you. Because, you know, so many businesses have all these great ideas and they fail and they aren't even ours. You know, I mean, you know, we, we have even, you know. So, um, what, what, uh, what, what is the one thing, like say, say like a lot of people probably want money for either a building or to, to own it or 
to rent it, or you know, to, to hire people to do part of the job, or to outsource. I mean, like, can you say a few things that you know are the most risky things that people ask for loans for, and don't don't know it at all? They think it's the absolutely right way to go. So I just want to see if we can blow that out of the water. Great question. Yeah, I'll give you an example. Um, not too long ago, I, I, I uh, filled a phone call from somebody that was wanting to start a restaurant in some other market. And this person had already signed the lease of their space. They had um, invested uh, a couple of hundred thousand dollars of their own funds into um, you know, doing the flooring, the, uh, uh, quite a bit of the upfitting, a lot of these kitchen and, and um, um, you know, preparation equipment things are, are they cost a lot. Um, they did not do a very good job of planning, but it, or if they did, it was simply inadequate. The call that I fielded from them went along these lines. Hi, we needed another $100,000 to finish our project because we ran out of our own money. Um, and I mentioned that as sort of like a cautionary tale to, um, I guess one, one rule you could, could sort of get from that is, if you're planning on to do a project that is relatively large scale, that's going to require a lot more than just the funds you know you already have, be very careful about spending anything on that project until you've secured the bank financing also, or until you've got a, you know, a signed commitment letter in writing for the bank saying that it's approved. I've also encountered other situations where people have gone on a lender's verbal indication or maybe suggestion that the loan may kind of like be approved, you know, soon. And either it takes a really long time for them to actually approve it, or it gets declined by that person's boss, and maybe the small business applicant kind of feels that they were led astray. Um, the second rule to that would be, if it's not in writing, it's not approved. If it's not in writing, it's not approved. So, a couple of tips from me. Uh, two things that I thought would think of, um, these kind of risky uses of money for borrowing money would be, one would be to, um, you know, basically high, bring on a large uh, payroll of some sort, hire new people. I mean, basically, what the idea it sounds like, you know, usually is, oh, I'll just hire this person, they'll start producing for me, and then the sales will materialize, and I'll be able to pay you back. And that's just the clock's ticking on burning through the money, and then, you know, it kind of puts a deadline, in which, you know, certain things have to happen or else it can't be paid back. So, um, that, and also, kind of just for marketing campaign, um, uh, some, you know, certain marketing campaigns can be really good uses of money, but, you know, there's some uncertainty about, and I've seen a lot of, a lot of large dollar amounts spent, you know, hiring a professional marketing firm or spending a lot of money on ads and stuff that don't amount to anything. So, um, it's, you know, that can be a real uncertainty as to how that's going to um, have an impact. Another one that we've seen is that a lot of times, and this does not just apply to artists. In fact, I think artists are often more careful about this because they're used to making their money stretch. But what I've seen is that when people are afraid of a certain thing, that they will pay to have people do it for them. And there are areas that you don't need to have pay, to pay for, such as a business plan. You know, there are so many great free resources in this area that that's, that's an automatic one. You can just mark off your list, I can get that for free. Um, and one of the things that lenders look at are your areas of fear. Because if you are afraid of it now, then you're going to be afraid of it when you're running your business. And so you have to think in terms of either, you know, planning to handle that fear, like, I have a spouse who is very good with numbers, and they're going to take care of the accounting for me, or whatever. Or you have to teach yourself to do that, um, that skill. One of the worst things is what Patrick was saying, is I'll just hire someone. Because that says to the lender, 
that you don't that you haven't really looked at your numbers and you haven't projected into the future what it's going to cost to to keep that person on staff. And it's one of the things that takes down a business sooner than anything mm -hmm. is wanting to be where you want to get to on day one. You know, just think of it in terms of a stair-step process of planning over time to get from point A to point B. Maybe Eileen, could, would you be willing to share with the group about what was the riskiest part of the loan for you, for this, if, if there was any fear? <laughs> uh, I don't know that uh, there was really the riskiest part. I had a really good credit rating, so that was not an obstacle. Uh, the, yeah, uh, I wanted to say something else, and now, now I've lost the chart. <laughs> <laughs> It'll come back. Any, any fear about getting a loan? Um, no, no. I did not have fear this time about, about this project. Uh, I had very, um, you know, I was very confident about it. I did a lot of research. I spent a lot of time doing research. So I was, um, I was not as nervous going into this loan application as I was going into my, my uh, moral exam for my dissertation. <laughs> And could you talk about the marketing, how you're marketing your business now that you've got the loan? I am, uh, my product line, my new product line is going to be wholesale only. So, <clears throat> excuse me, so I am looking at, uh, it's a fabric, it's a line of quilting fabrics. So I'm looking at distributors. Uh, I'm actually in the process right now of sending out um, samples to distributors. So uh, <clears throat> my support, for that will be videos online, uh, videos that I can do specifically for them, lots of literature. So uh, I'm spending a lot of my marketing money right now on supporting people who are really selling Okay. And I wanted to say about uh, uh, the buying, I know you can buy a business plan or hire someone to write your business plan. But it never occurred to me because I have to be 100% certain of everything that's in that plan. I took the class at Mount Bizworks and I highly recommend it because you're in a class with Cards. 
and plates and other objects and other products based on her paintings. And she's starting to export them. And there are uh, export loans. So if you if you have a product that you're thinking of exporting, uh, we have an export specialist in, in my organization who can meet with you one on one and. and just, and kind of explore that opportunity, and then there are some small export loans strictly for that. How many of you are exporting now? Okay, uh, just curious. Yes. Yes.